I have things I'd like to do. I think the lease on my investment property may be up soon. Maybe it's time to cash out of my rental investment. After all, the market is good, right? Maybe now's the time I could use the money. Have you ever had those thoughts? In fact, has somebody told you it's a good thing to do? I've got some things for you to consider. Have you heard the phrase, have your cake and eat it too? So let's talk about having your cake and eating it too. This is part of the TCT Investor Services and I'm Steve Chater with TCT Property Management. And we are the resource for people building financial independence with real estate. So we hear this all the time. People say, I want to cash out or I need to cash out. It's something that with the thousands of investors that we've worked with, uh, we hear that all the time. And they think owning an investment is a really good thing. However, they have other things they'd like to do, like maybe a beach condo or, or, or a cabin in the mountains or maybe remodeling the kitchen. And uh, while all of those things are good ideas, Making the decision to get rid of the investment property may not be what a good investor would do. So can you have your cake and eat it too? Let's consider the idea of refinancing the investment property. In today's market, you can actually lower your interest rate at the same time increasing your cash flow. You see, you've had an investment, and this investment might have started out at $200,000, and now we're at two hundred fifty, dollars and then we're at $300,000. Your investment has continued to grow, which has been awesome. You own that investment, growing in value, and every year your net worth has been going up. So at this point, you've got some good equity. I just want to share with you that wealth and financial security comes from owning the asset, not the cash. Unless you take the cash and buy another asset that uh, performs equally as well or better. So even if your investment never went up in value, which is not the case in Phoenix, Arizona, every month your tenant has been paying off your mortgage. It's like having a stranger put hundreds of dollars in your savings account every month. Here's an example, and this is my property. I actually purchased this property in April of 2007. I paid $220,000 for it. I put 20% down and I got a mortgage for $176,000. And then uh, the interest rate at that time was 6%. And as you can see, my monthly payment was $1,055. So purchase that. I held on to that property. After 2007, our property values dipped a little bit, but they've come back. And so right now, the current value on that property is $290,000 which means that if I refinance that property, leaving 20% equity in the home, I can get a mortgage or refinance amount of 232,000. My current interest rate is 4%. My payment now is $1,107, so my payment just went up 50 bucks. But the tenants paid down my mortgage for me to 144,000. So the proceeds of that refinance allows me to put $88,000 in my pocket. Not a bad, not a bad thing. So let's just take a look and let's see what's happened. In 2007, when I first purchased it, I was renting that house for $1,200 a month. Now I'm renting that same house for $1,700 a month. I refinance it. I put eighty-five to ninety thousand dollars in my pocket. I keep a positive cash flow because while my payment went up fifty bucks, my rent went up five hundred bucks. I don't have to pay taxes on the money, and I get to keep the investment. So I get to eat, have my cake and eat it too. I get some cash out. I can do things with the cash. Now let's take a look forward. And so on this example, and you can see here, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but over here on the side it says in year five and year 10, if I'm projecting this one out because I'm holding on to it, down here inside the red circle, you can see that I'm projecting a 14% return on investment. I don't expect that the stock market will be able to give me that same return on investment. Again, having my cake and eating it too.
So think about this. Think about you bought a property for $200,000, you got a loan for $160,000 at 5%, uh, and then 10 years later you sold it for $300,000. The tenant would have paid down your loan over those 10 years to $130,000. So now your $40,000 down payment has just grown to $170,000. Is it time to sell? Well, let's take a look at that. Ten years later, I think I want to cash out, so I sell it for $300,000. I net about two seventy dollars after the cost of sales, and then I pay off the mortgage, so I put $140,000 in my pocket. Not a bad deal, right? Until Uncle Sam comes and says, okay, time to settle up with me, and we've got capital gains and depreciation tax. How does that work? Um, Okay, over the past 10 years you've owned this property. You've saved on your taxes because you took a deduction for depreciation and that property is going to be about $5,800 a year. You multiply that times 10 years, that's $58,000. Well, the IRS says depreciation get, lets you pretend like you're losing money every year and write it off, but if you didn't actually lose money, they say, oh, well, we want 25% of that back. You're going to have to pay us 25% tax. That's $14,500. What about capital gains? All right. Now, this is a little bit complicated, but I'm going to make it simple. The first thing you have to do is you have to calculate what's your basis. So you see you paid $200,000 for the property. You subtracted $58,000 worth of depreciation, so now your basis is $142,000. The 200 minus 58. Okay, you took $276,000 proceeds of your sale. You subtract your basis from it. That means you have $134,000 capital gain. Well, capital gains is gonna be taxed at 15%. So there, there you go. You got $140,000. You have paid $20,000 in capital gains, you pay $14,500 in recapture or depreciation, you get to keep $105,000 after tax. But what if we refinanced it instead? All right, here's your $300,000 property value. You're gonna go ahead and get a $240,000 loan at 80% of that value. You're going to pay off your current loan, $130,000. That puts $110,000 in your pocket with no, with no tax to pay. You still own the property. The property value is still going up. And your tenant is still paying off the loan for you. Actually, you could buy another rental property for $300,000, put 20% down, and still have $50,000 in your pocket. Why would you sell? Now here's where we can help. In addition to being one of the owners of TCT Property Management Services, I'm also part of Keller Williams Realty. And at Keller Williams, we have what's called the zero plus mortgage. Zero lender fees, zero origination fees, plus you get $1,000 back at the closing to help cost of appraisal and title and, and things like that that come in. Now, Every mortgage company can do that for you, but what they do is they raise your interest rate in order to cover all of those costs. We just discount and say, we're not gonna charge any of those costs. It's gonna save you four or $5,000 in upfront costs, and you get the low interest rate. So call us, call us if you need some help or if you're even considering this. And by the way, it doesn't have to be your investment property. It could be the house that you're living with anywhere in the United States. So, thank you for watching this video. This is a part of our wealth building series at TCT, part of our investor services. We are the resource for people building wealth with real estate, building financial security with real estate. And we're here to answer your questions and take care of all of your real estate needs.